Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Free Spirit Friday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living a good life right here on WBOK. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 a.m., so make sure you never have to miss a show. But if you do, we are always live on Facebook, The Good Life Radio Show. Follow our page. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. That is at TGL Radio Show, at TGL Radio Show, because it is the good life. Um, If you do follow us on all of our social media platforms, you will know that we had a a little event uh, last week and kind of pop off that kind of grew, especially into last week and trickling through this week as well. Uh, The Good Life Radio went viral, but it was due to this wonderful woman that I have on the line with me today. So I would like to welcome Miss Holly Maniotti. Holly, good morning and welcome to The Good Life. How are you? I'm great. I also excuse the background noise. I'm on a playground right now. Oh, no <laughs> problem. I'm just, like, happy to finally meet you. You know, I know we've been emailing back and forth. Uh, yeah. I'm sure it's been a little bit of a whirlwind for you for this last week and a half. It has been for me, but I, I want to say, like, I don't know if I should, like, apologize or embrace <laughs> because, like, you know, on one side, and, and let me just give you the numbers because just on on my video we have reached 19.9 million viewers who have physically watched the entire video, but it's been 46.5 million that people who have this video has been reached. Wow. <laughs> right. That was my, that, you know, that's my thing. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm like, I'm like, I feel bad because I'm like, she didn't ask for this. But on the <laughs> other hand, I right? But on the other hand, I'm like, it's bringing attention and awareness to such a good cause. So, like, I apologize, but not really, sort of. I don't know which one. I don't, I don't know which one to do. So I wanted to personally tell you this because this is our first time meeting and actually speaking to each other. Uh, so I want to say, number one, thank you for all that you do. Like, thank you for oh, what absolutely. you do and the energy that you bring. It is absolutely amazing. Um just give me like how how has your last week and a half been? Uh, it's been a little crazy. I, I I got home. Um, I live in Portland, Maine, so I got home on Monday night, and then I woke up on Tuesday, and it just kind of went crazy. I couldn't believe how many people it had reached, and I didn't even know I was being filmed, so that was kind of a surprise. And um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> so it's. It's been a little crazy, and um, I mean, above all, I think the best part is it's bringing awareness to accessibility issues right. and sign language and the deaf community, and most importantly, deaf people. So, um, all in all, I think it's going to be a really great thing. You know what? With with your rhythm and your moves, I think, and I, I made this assumption. I had just assumed that you were from New Orleans. I had no idea that you weren't from here, because girl, you got the moves. <laughs> well, I've been I've been going to the jazz fest for many years, so it, it took me a while to kind of absorb that. But New Orleans got plenty of it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how did you get into this this line of, of work? Is is it a passion? Was it how did you get introduced to it? Um, I'm a sign language interpreter professionally. I've been doing it for almost eighteen years and I just kind of uh naturally moved into performance interpreting after working in the community and just really enjoying the ability or the opportunity to provide access to people um, to musical experiences and then it eventually became festivals as festivals became more popular in the last um, five, six, seven years. So it just kind of became a part of something that I do for the summer months when the festivals are happening and then the rest of the year I'm an interpreter um, freelance for myself. Well, I will say, you know, I did a little research on you. This isn't even the first time you've gone viral. You went viral uh, in 2013 with Wu-Tang. Correct. Yes, that did happen. <laughs> and you were on Jimmy Kimmel and in a battle. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that did happen too. <laughs> and I'm like, but I'm, I'm I'm watching all of this and like you just take it in stride and you're so cool about it. But it really is opening minds to a whole nother level of um, experience for our deaf community. Last week yeah. I had on Cat Brewer with the sign yeah. for the show, mm-hmm. and so I, yeah, I didn't I didn't realize the um, the deficit that our deaf community has because you know I'm, I'm I am privileged and I take mm-hmm. it you know unfortunately you know just 
kind of happenstance that, you know, I can hear. But everyone doesn't have that ability. And, you know, when we go to concerts and events, we take it for granted that, uh, you know, they have the ADA access with the ramps and the handicap for people in wheelchairs and may not walk, you know, be able to, to walk. Mm-hmm. But we take it, it for granted that people who can't hear don't have that same luxury at all of our events. Yeah, and um, I think something really important to point out is that the New Orleans Jazz and um, Heritage Festival has has a long-standing history of providing access um, through sign language interpreters for a really long time, and um, they they've always felt that that's an important part of the festival to make sure that people that want to access uh, New Orleans culture and music and everything that that festival has to offer is accessible to anybody. And um, I'm just really privileged to be a part of such a great team. I'm just one of the of a large team of interpreters that include, you know, eight, eight or seven or eight other amazing interpreters and they come from all over the country to interpret at the festival and um, are just amazing practitioners of performance interpreting. So I just want to put that out there. I'm just one yes. of many. <laughs> well, I will say this. There are many people and, you know, I've, I've I, I can I tell you, we have 268,000 shares. Imagine mm-hmm. that. And there have lots yeah. of people who have been putting comments about how they would like to get involved in American Sign Language. So if there was someone listening right now, mm-hmm. what what school did you go to? What classes did you take? How can someone become involved in this so it can grow? Uh, I'd say the number one most important thing to do is make a connection with the deaf community in your area. Mm. New Orleans has a very vibrant deaf community, and, um, you know, the Lighthouse organization has um, information on their webpage on how to get involved in the deaf community in New Orleans. Uh, but if you're looking and thinking about this as a, a future profession, I went to college to be an interpreter. I went to RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, and then and got a degree in interpreting and then um, got another degree in American Sign Language Linguistics with a focus in brain science. And um, it, it's just been a passion of mine. The most amazing thing about sign language is you'll never know everything about it. Right. Constantly, yeah, it's, it's diverse and it changes and it morphs just in the same way spoken English does. Um, and the deaf community is absolutely a wonderful, wonderful group of people that are super supportive of each other. And just to be able to be a part of that is a privilege on a daily basis. And I, I would just say if people are interested in, in learning about that, go to the deaf community in your area. Look up the deaf club in your area or look up the local school for the deaf, and they will have resources for you because the best way to learn sign language is from the people who really, you know, kind of own it, which is the deaf culture. Right. So this is what everybody wants to know. How mm-hmm. do you prepare for a show? How do you know? How do you get the vibe? How do you get it going? How do you know what music they're going to play? Do they give you information <laughs> before? Like, you just know it no. to a T. <laughs> Um, well, it's a long process. Usually a show t- can take anywhere from 20 to 40 hours to get ready for. Wow. And depending on how much, you know, how, what the large body of work is um, to prepare for. Someone like The Weeknd has a few albums where Snoop Dogg has many, many albums and also right. songs that he's featured on. So, right. you know, it takes quite a while. And we do a lot of research about, you know, statistically speaking, what they've played in the last year. So they may play a set of these of 40 songs, for example. And then my teammate Amy Adkins and I just put that up based on you know, the songs that we wanted to prepare. And then we do a lot of analysis of the lyrics. Um, you know, if he's, if uh, Snoop is referencing, well, specifically for him, a specific strain of Kush or whatever. Right. <laughs> and, um, or if he's talking about a historical event or something of that nature, we're going through and analyzing that and then just working on the interpretation to make it most accessible and most authentic as possible. And, and then we just practice and practice and practice. <laughs> That is so amazing. It is so amazing just to watch you. It really feels like I'm watching art, to be perfectly honest. Oh. I know I, I know that it's you know the American Sign Language, but the way that you you move and you bring it really does look like art in motion. So I have to um, you know tell you thank you and for the entire community, you know who's been able to watch you and enjoy it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My last question, because you are on the good life, and so I have to ask you this. I know you have to go, but what does uh-huh. the good life look like to you? What is your good life? Uh, I'd say probably in a greater sense, a good life to me would be a world that's accessible to anybody regardless of where you're from and mm. what you can or cannot do. And I think I think most importantly, um, I was raised with a philosophy that you treat all, everybody with goodwill at all times. Oof. And I, I think for me that's, that's paramount, that kindness really does matter. And, yeah, that's what I would say. Kindness matters. Being nice matters. Being nice matters. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I know it's been a whirlwind. I want to hug you and like apologize, but not really all no, at the same don't time. Apologize. Okay, I'm glad it brought you know people to your show. Yes, yes. I mean, overnight. And honestly, I mean, short story. I didn't even know. Like, I, I posted it <laughs> Saturday, 
And, you know, went to Jazz Fest Sunday. I had a friend in mm-hmm. town, so I wasn't even paying attention to it Monday. And I'm usually with the radio paying, you know, attention. Yeah. I was just doing the yeah. stuff for the, the station and whatever else. But I didn't really pay attention until Monday evening. And I called my boyfriend. And I was like, I think we're going viral. It was like 700 <laughs> thousand views and the most before that was like maybe 200,000 and I thought I was doing a lot there right and so I was like I think we're going viral but I didn't expect it to maybe be more than that and then the next day I'm like I had the newscast here can we use your video and I was like sure why not like you know I think it's great but the good life is about uh, for me it's about opening minds to living differently in the world and I open my show and I say that every day with love compassion tolerance and understanding and that's exactly what you exude so I know God was looking down and he wanted it to touch the world because literally we have had calls from Australia, Amsterdam, Japan, the Netherlands. I am not kidding. I am not kidding. And I'm like, yes, all that, you know, all they have to do is do photo cred, the good life radio show. So I want to thank you for for everything that you do to help us, um, you know, touch the world with, with something loving, you know, there's enough fighting and all those crazy viral videos, but I was just happy that there was something positive that went viral and it was something, you know, that touched our hearts and our souls. So I want to thank you very much for all that you do for the community and, you know, the world at this point. You've touched the world, Holly, so thank you very much. Wow. Well, thank you guys so much and just keep doing what you're doing. It's getting out there. Uh, thank you. This is The Good Life, y'all. We are going to take a quick break. This is Holly Maniotti. I'm like, don't, don't. I'm like, go look her up. Yeah, go look her up. Go look her up. <laughs> go watch our video. Go share it. You know, spread some positive energy in the world we need more of it and please become aware and cognizant of the deaf community and just like she said reach out in your area you know spread that awareness spread that love and it can be the good life thanks so much for tuning in we are going to take a quick break you know we are breaking those labels that's what we have been discussing this week we have been breaking the label of the deaf community right here with holly maniotti because our video went viral this was the first time literally that we had spoken to each other so i want to thank her for everything that she does and again it's a good life y'all we'll be right back Looking for a roadmap to get out of the financial rat race? If so, go to MyFinancialTrainingPro.com to register for NOLA Homes Project's free income shifting strategy session. The world has more to offer you than just a job and a paycheck. Our experts will show you how to raise your credit scores, minimize your taxes and expenses, while investing in real estate to put more cash in your pocket each and every month. Seating is limited, so do not wait. Visit MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. That's MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. Small businesses play an important role in society, and LNR Security is no different. LNR Security delivers safety and comfort to our neighborhoods, events, apartment communities, conventions, work sites, festivals, and your business. LNR Security can be reached at 504-943-3191 to ensure the safety of your employees, customers, family, friends, and you. LNR Security has made its mark in the security arena for over 37 years and will faithfully continue that tradition. Call today for your personalized consultation to ensure your security needs are met. LNR Security differentiates itself by creating partnerships with our clients and guards. We are now hiring armed and unarmed guard professionals, retired military, sheriffs, and PD to grow with us and impact our community. Be a part of the change with LNR Security. Call us now at 504-943-3191. 504-943-3191. Isogenics is one of the fastest growing companies in the world because their products work. Their solutions and culture has redefined the health and wellness industry. Science backs their products and statistics back their success. But it's the people who make them successful. And I, Eileen Carter, have joined the Isogenics revolution. I've used the products and followed their system, and I swear by them. I'm on my journey of transformation and invite you to join me and try Isogenics today. Challenge yourself and change your life. Find information and test Testimonials at the Good Life Radio Show. Isogenics.com. The Good Life Radio Show. Isogenics.com. The Good Life Radio Show. I S A G E N I X. 
Com. Order yours today. Join Metropolitan Human Services District and Xavier University as they tackle an important panel discussion entitled Hashtag Get Your Mind Right, a collegiate mental health conversation. It all happens at the Xavier University Center, room 205 on Wednesday, May 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. Get informed during Mental Health Awareness Month. It's Hashtag Get Your Mind Right. We'll see you May 24th at the Xavier University Center with Metropolitan Human Services District. The Dillon University Office of Community and Church Relations, in partnership with Bethany United Methodist Church, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, New Orleans, Louisiana Baptist Charities, and Pentecost Baptist Church, come together to host the Gentilly, Desire, Pontchartrain Park Community Health and Resources Fair. It all happens Saturday, June 10th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's located at Holy Cross Lutheran Church at 6154 Press Drive. This free event will feature diabetes testing, health screenings, men's health care, legal services from expungement information and housing rights, prostate cancer information, Children dental services, banking and mortgage information, employment services, job training programs, Medicaid expansion updates, fitness exercise, cooking demonstrations, and so much more. For more information, contact Nick Harris at 504-473-1141. That's 504-473-1141. It's the Gentilly Desire Poncha Train Park Community Health and Resources Fair. It all happens Saturday, June 10th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's located at Holy Cross Lutheran Church at 6154 Press Drive. You are now listening to the radio station that's keeping it real. WBOK 1230 AM, where it's real talk for real time. Good life with me, Eileen. We are here on Free Spirit Friday. And we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK. We are opening minds, living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and hopefully everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 a.m. We're also live on Facebook, so make sure you never have to miss a show. Make sure you follow us, The Good Life Radio Show, The Good Life Radio Show. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is The Good Life Radio Show, Eileen Carter. There's so much good life out there, you got to add my name to find me. The Good Life Radio Show, Eileen Carter. But right now, if you type it in, I'm sure I'm kind of at the top. Because we went viral, so I want to thank um, Holly Maniotti for helping us grow the radio show. We have gotten a lot of attention. We currently have 19.9 million views. We have reached 46.5 million people with 268,000 shares. So I want to thank each and every one of you. You all are the ones that I've started out with, and I want to continue. So please make sure you share that. Let this grow. So many things go viral in the world, so many bad things. It was very nice to have something positive go viral. So that is the good life. And yesterday we kind of started this conversation and I want to be able to open the lines because today we're going to break down another label. We have our last statue that's coming down and we talked a little bit about cognitive dissidence yesterday. And that's what, that's that uneasy, that's that uneasy feeling you have when, when you get some information and it does not meet up with exactly your beliefs and it's that uneasy feeling it's like how do we break through that how do we turn and 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 work through it and get to the other side how do we walk through that fear because honestly that's what it is in life it's really everything comes down to two things it's either fear or love you can break it down as anxiety hatred, joy, anxiety, whatever else. You can break it down to whatever you want to break it down to, but when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, it's either love or fear. And how do you want to live your life? Do you want to live your life in fear? Or do you want to live your life in love? And so many of us have been hurt. We talked about that with regard to our community. Hurt people 
create hurt families and hurt families create hurt communities and hurt communities create hurt societies. So if we start within ourselves and open our mind to living differently in the world, we can change the world. If each one of us starts to just be nice, whatever you did, whatever your frame of mind was, let that be yesterday. Today, this moment, 1121 is a different start for each and every one of you. It can be a new day. It can be a new start. What, what you've done in the past that shoulda, coulda, woulda, it doesn't matter if you didn't finish school if you didn't um, get the job if you didn't um, if you had an addiction if it's gambling drinking smoking whatever it is if you had a bad relationship with a family member if you had a bad breakup if you're divorced whatever it is for you the the first person the first thing you need to do is acknowledge that you have the pain because number one that breaks off the majority of the shackles and 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 that's what you feel you feel that oh that's like whatever it is and then you're like that, that uncomfortableness. That's your pain. That's that anxiety. That's that shame. That's that, that uncomfortable feeling. That's that cognitive dissonance. When you are faced with something that you're like, oh, I don't want to go through it, but you can. And on the other side of it is joy. I promise I wouldn't tell you something I haven't done myself. I am a work in progress, but every time I do it, it gets a little bit easier. Self-reflection is the key. It changes your life. And walking through that fear and feeling that joy is, for me, part of the good life. And I would like to share that with each and every one of you. So speaking of co- cognitive dissidents with what, everything that we have going on today, of course, we have the last statue coming down. We have uh, the statue of Lee coming down today. And I want to shout out to my sister because she took all of the uh, all of the kids of the family out there to watch it uh, come down. And she's giving them a history lesson today. And this should be a history lesson for each and every one of us. We should know our history and we should know exactly what it is and we should know the truth about it. So I said each and every show that I was going to play um It is a colonel who is a history professor from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. The last five minutes of every show through Wednesday, I will play this uh, I will play this video. So if you want to tell somebody to tune in, make sure they tune in at 1150. At 1150, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is, it has passed the House in Louisiana. Unfortunately, it has, it has opened a wound that we have had and a lot of hatred and and nastiness has oozed out but I kind of want to see it as as a positive thing you know we we get I'm always going to try to find the silver lining for me I'm like if we kept that that bandage on there without tearing it off it would always be there at least this way it is open and we can begin to have conversation because for whatever reason, there is a connection there. And I like to hear other people's point of view. I want to know. I may not agree with you, but I want to know your reasoning behind it. I want to know because the only thing that differentiates us is exposure. You lived a different life. You were exposed to different things. My history isn't always um, my history isn't always dictated to us in school. We have to go out and find our history. But, you know, for others, their history is dictated for them in a book. So maybe that's why you are you have a little bit more of a connection to it. But that history is equated to slavery, whether you agree with it or not. I, I, I had the video on on. On Facebook last night, I have it on WBOK's page. I have it on my personal page, Eileen Carter, WBOK, and the Good Life Radio Show page. So if you want to go watch it, you can go to any of those Facebook pages. The video is there for you to watch. And um, somebody, he was like, I don't agree with, I don't agree with the history professor from the U.S. um, and the colonel, excuse me, the colonel history professor from the U.S. Military Academy of West Point. I'm like, okay, you don't have to agree with him. I'm just putting out true information. If, if you want to say that he's not telling the truth, that's on you. That's your cognitive dissidence. That's the uncomfortable feeling you have. You need to work through that. And, and I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm just putting the information out there. If it agrees with you, wonderful. But at least you heard it. At least you've heard truth. This is coming from a man, a colonel, a history professor at the U.S. Military Academy of West Point. If if there's anybody in the world you believe, why not this man? Why not this man? You know, we we, we want to point fingers, shoulda, coulda, woulda. This man speaks truth. Sometimes we don't like the truth, and it's okay. You don't have to like it, but the truth is the truth. You know the, how there's always a side to the story, and there's a truth. He has he he is a colonel in our U.S. military. 
kind of is what it is. So I go into why it's dangerous to label people. This is the conversation of today. And I got this out of psychology today. And this goes into a lot of, you know, what we do in our society and what we do in our world. It goes to say that if you lined up 1,000 randomly selected people from across the earth, none of them would share exactly the same skin tone. You could arrange them from darkest to lightest, and there wouldn't be a single tie. Of course, the continuity of skin tone hasn't stopped humans from assigning each other to discrete skin color labels like black and white or categories that have no basis in biology. None. But nonetheless, we go on to determine our social, political and economic well-being of their members. Categorical labeling is a tool that humans. Did y'all hear that? Humans. Us, us, that we use to resolve the impossible complexity of the environments that we grapple to perceive. We create these divisions. We create these labels so that we can have a better understanding. They actually don't exist. Like so many human faculties, it's adaptive and miraculous, but it also contributes to some of the deepest problems that face our species the deepest rooted problems from way back when till today. This is our problem, labeling. We label uh, with regard to gender. We label with regard to sexuality, with religion, with uh, political views, with we always have to label somebody. And half the time we do it and we don't even know the person. We've never even had to sit down and really understood where they're coming from. Um, it goes on to say that research, researchers began to study the cognitive effects of labeling in the 1930s. When linguist Benjamin Worf proposed the linguist relative relativity hypothesis, it says, according to this hypothesis, the words we use to describe what we see aren't just idle placeholders. What we see, they actually determine what we see per se. According to one tale, the intuit can distinguish between dozens of different types of, i.e., snow that the rest of us perceive as simply snow, so different shades of it, because they have a different label for each use. This, and it isn't true. What we see isn't true. And they say the colleagues suggest that these hold kernels of truth. So it goes on to say that the scientist... Um, and the speakers have distinguished between two very similar but subtly different shades of colors. They say in English, we have a single word for the color blue. But in Russia, go figure, um, divide the spectrum of blue into lighter shades of light blue into darker shades into darker blue. Where we use a single label for that color, they use two different labels. When the two shades of blue uh, straddled, the Russian speakers, which were much quicker to distinguish between them because they had readily available labels for the two colors than the English speakers. So long story short, they did... Um, they did an experiment on how our eyes distinguish things and how we label due to what we perceive. But we know that our eyes are all made up differently. And I think we learned that the best from that dress. Y'all remember that dress and how it went across the world? The picture was it, was it uh, black and blue or was it white and gold? That went on. People argued they had fights in the family and all of it came down to the cones in our eyes and how we perceive and how we see things. But everybody sees something different. I can look at something. Lee can look at something. Uh, Susan, Chuck, uh, Rachel, we can all, Timelin, we can all look at something and see something totally different because we are made up differently. But when, if we were all able to look at something and then do it with love and compassion and tolerance and understanding for whatever we're looking at, and we are not being judgmental, we can all take the information we we got from it and maybe work together and bring it to some harmony through love. That's the difference. It's opening your mind to do something different. They say labels shape more than our perception of color. They also change how we perceive more complex things like people. The, so, the, the psychologist goes on to say that they showed white college students a picture of a man who was racially ambiguous. 
that he could have plausibly fallen into the IE white category or the IE black category. For half of the students, the face was described as belonging to a white man. And for the other half, it was described as belonging to a black man. They said in one task, the experimenter asked the students to spend four minutes drawing the face as it sat on the screen in front of them. Although the students were looking at the exact same face, those who tended to believe that race is an entrenched human characteristic drew faces that match the stereotype associated with the label. The racial labels formed a lens through which the students saw the man and they were incapable of perceiving him independently of that label. And I'm getting this again from psychology today. So this goes on to say that race isn't the only label that shapes our possession perception, excuse me. They say a classic study by John Darley uh, showed similar effects when they varied whether a young girl, Hannah, seemed poor or wealthy. College students watched a video of Hannah playing in her neighborhood and read a brief fact sheet that described her background. Some of the students watched Hannah playing in a low-income housing estate, and her parents were described as high school graduates with blue-collar jobs. The remaining students watched Hannah behaving similarly, but this time she was filmed playing in a tree-lined middle-class neighborhood, and her parents were described as college-educated professionals. The students were asked to assess Hannah's academic ability after watching her respond to a series of achievement test questions. Well, in the video, Hannah responded inconsistently sometimes, answering difficult questions correctly, and sometimes answering very simple questions incorrectly. Hannah's academic ability remained difficult to discern, but that didn't. It did not stop the students from using her socioeconomic status as a proxy for her academic ability. When Hannah was labeled IE middle class, the students believed she performed close to a fifth grade level. But when she was labeled IE poor, they believed she performed below a fourth grade level. The long-term consequences of labeling children like Hannah smart or slow, are profound. And we do this every day in our education system, y'all. In another classic study, um, teachers were told at an elementary school that some of their students had scored in the top 20% of a test designed to identify academic bloomers. Students who were expected to enter a period of intense intellectual development over the next year. They said, in fact, the students were selected randomly and they performed no differently from their unselected peers on a genuine academic test. So they gave them the okie doke. They said after a year of convincing the teachers that some of their students were due to bloom, then they returned to the school and administered the same test. They said the results were astonishing. Among the younger children, the IE bloomers that they labeled, who were no different from their peers a year ago, those students now outperformed their unselected peers by 10 to 15 IQ points. 10 to 15. The teachers fostered the intellectual development of the IE bloomers, producing a self-fulfilling prophecy in which the students who were basically expected to bloom actually outperformed their peers. So what does this tell us with regard to labeling? We looked at it with regard to skin color, with racism, with regard to teaching our children, y'all. We are labeling our children. We are labeling each other. When we can break through these things, we can all have possibilities beyond our imagination. We need to break through these things and see what we all have in common. It's a good life, y'all. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be back. We're going to break these things. We're going to, you know, spread some love, y'all. It's the good life. Free Spirit Friday. We'll be right back. Small 
businesses play an important role in society, and LNR Security is no different. LNR Security delivers safety and comfort to our neighborhoods, events, apartment communities, conventions, work sites, festivals, and your business. LNR Security can be reached at 504 943 3191 to ensure the safety of your employees, customers, family, friends, and you. LNR Security has made its mark in the security arena for over 37 years and will faithfully continue that tradition. Call today for your personalized consultation to ensure your security needs are met. LNR Security differentiates itself by creating partnerships with our clients and guards. We are now hiring armed and unarmed guard professionals, retired military, sheriffs, and PD to grow with us and impact our community. Be a part of the change with LNR Security. Call us now at 504-943-3191. 504-943-3191. Are you looking for a roadmap to get out of the financial rat race? If so, go to MyFinancialTrainingPro.com to register for NOLA Homes Project's free income shifting strategy session. The world has more to offer you than just a job and a paycheck. Our experts will show you how to raise your credit scores, minimize your taxes and expenses, while investing in real estate to put more cash in your pocket each and every month. Seating is limited, so do not wait. Visit MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. That's MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. Isagenics is one of the fastest growing companies in the world because their products work. Their solutions and culture has redefined the health and wellness industry. Science backs their products and statistics back their success. But it's the people who make them successful. And I, Eileen Carter, have joined the Isagenics revolution. I've used the products and followed their system, and I'd swear by them. I'm on my journey of transformation and invite you to join. Join me and try Isagenics today. Challenge yourself and change your life. Find information and testimonials at thegoodliferadioshow.isagenics.com. Thegoodliferadioshow.isagenics.com. Thegoodliferadioshow.isagenix.com. Order yours today. Come on, roll with RCA. You back for more information and now with us more info at NORCA.com. You can plan your trip ahead of time or on your phone. You can text the stop number to see when the next bus is coming. You can follow New Orleans RTA on Facebook and Twitter. From New Orleans East to the Lower Nine, we got you covered. Dirt Town, Uptown, Downtown, to the Algiers Point, and all in between. Rolling for everybody everywhere. That RTA keeps New Orleans rolling. Catch OT in the morning, Chuck Perkins at 9, Eileen at 11, John Slade at noon, Rachel at full, and me, Cheryl Underwood, along with the Cheryl Underwood radio crew, Vic Frost, Harry Sutherland, Jim Kelly, and Kyle Irby. Every night at 7 on the People's Station, WBOK 1230 AM, where it's real talk for real times. WBOK 1230 AM, the People's Station. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Free Spirit Friday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love passion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and hopefully everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 a.m. Make sure you stay tuned, but you can always see us live. See what's going on right here in studio. Make sure you follow us on our Facebook page. We we broadcast live weekdays at 11. You never have to miss a show ever, never, never. And you can also catch our replays on our YouTube channel. So make sure you you subscribe. The Good Life Radio Show, Eileen Carter. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, we started today's show with Holly Maniotti. I want to 
thank her so much. Uh, we have kind of partnered together uh, unwittingly, though. Uh, she was at Jazz Fest. She is an American Sign Language interpreter. She is now AKA the Snoop Dogg interpreter. We went viral. We have touched 46.5 million people, and that is just through my Facebook uh, post itself. But what it has done is, in my opinion, and hers, we have, you know, created an awareness for, you know, our deaf community and our deaf uh, sisters and brothers, you know, and opened our mind to, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, um, I want to say the, the living, I don't want to say arrangements, but, the, you know, how we live every day, you know, things that we take for granted. When we go to entertainment uh, venues, we take for granted that we can hear. You know, in the ADA community, there are ramps and things like that and elevators to make sure that, you know, people in, in uh, wheelchairs and people who maybe have struggling have struggles walking can, you know, are accommodated. But for our hearing impaired community, that is not always available, those type of things. So there is a movement called Sign the Show with Kat Brewer. She was here last week. Uh, Holly knows her very well, so we want to make sure that we support that, anyone out there. And if you are interested in this, you know, go support the deaf community in your area, no matter where it is. Open your mind to living differently in the world. We have also been discussing labeling. Um, if you were paying attention uh, uh, yesterday, we I have started something new. It's Heal NOLA, Heal Our City. I'm going to cr- be creating an awareness campaign. I'm working um, with a couple organizations right now. I'm putting it together so when we launch it officially, you will uh, be the first to know. But love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding is so uh, – it, it, it just is a part of me at this point. And am I perfect? No. And But I try to be a better person each and every day. And so uh, this – uh, what's going on in our city right now has really, uh, it, 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 it's, it's sad. You know, we have the statues that are coming down. We talked a little bit about that ye- yesterday with regard to cognitive dissonance and that uneasy feeling that you have when you are, um, when some, when you are faced with something that, uh, goes against your beliefs, whether it's right or wrong, and you want to be, you're like, oh, but I can't be wrong. What are you talking about? I've, I've, this has been the information for all of these years, and I go on to say that I posted this video, uh, from a colonel, a history professor from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, and he basically, uh, breaks down exactly why the Civil War was, um, was fought. This is a professor from West Point. If and you know, I'm not telling you to believe him or not believe him, but I had people who are commenting on the video say, "No, he's wrong." You know, I'm like, "Well, he they put him in charge of military, you know, students at West Point." So, I mean, he's a history professor and a colonel. I I I, I kind of veer to believe him rather in, unless you have the same credentials in that manner. Because when I don't know something, I don't have a problem saying I'm ignorant. I was absolutely ignorant. And I wanted to find out the information. And I wanted to know how other people felt about the issue, people who didn't agree with me. And so I went on different media outlets, and I started reading underneath the uh, the, the videos and the pictures. Y'all, it is absolutely sickening. It is sickening. And then that bill that uh, what HB 71 that got out of the, the 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 House of Reps last week, and they had a Caucasian um, a state rep tell a an African American a black state rep to get over slavery, get over slavery. Who says that? It, it can it can only be due to ignorance. And for me, ignorance isn't a bad thing. It's just a lack of knowledge. That's what the definition is. It's a lack of knowledge. So I figure instead of pointing fingers or wanting to speak badly of them, how about we educate? And it's not something that I am well versed on. So I was like, I'm going to get the information from someone who is credible that we can all, you know, agree that, you know, it's credible. And whether you want to agree with him or not, that's fine. But this man is credible. He's a history professor, like I said, again, from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. And he uh, created this uh, video to settle the debate once and for all. You know, we label each other each and every day. We just went through exactly what cognitive dissonance is, and it's that uncomfortable feeling. And we went through how labels and how we do that to each other, how the examples when 
you know, a group of people were faced with, you know, a young man who uh, was ambiguous whether to he was black or white. And we do that every day, especially now we have so many different mixed cultures. We walk down the street and we like to label people, but we don't just label them on race. We label them on their abilities. And unfortunately, we we do that to our children. We do that to our children. We had a, a, a wonderful young black woman who has come up with a cure for cancer, but they told her her cure did not require uh, a prescription drugs, meaning it did not require money. So they wanted her to recreate it so that they could put it in a drug and they could sell it. That's where we are today. But what if she was labeled? as to she would never amount to anything, as to she can't be educated. We do that all the time, all the time. And socioeconomically, we talked about the little girl who had the picture, you know, with with one background and the other background. We labeled her in, in her abilities. We do that every day. If we can start to break these labels, if we can start to break these chains, if we can start to break these mindsets, we can live the good life. It's love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and everyone else. What would that world look like? Could you even imagine it if everyone were nice? Can you even imagine it? I was getting gas yesterday, and they had these two ladies who were going off on each other, arguing over over paying for gas. And I don't know her struggle, but I was just like, ugh, like, it's inundating. It's everywhere we go. But I guess what was sad for me is there were children who were sitting in the car. They're watching these two wonderful black women curse each other out. And I'm just like, our children are watching us. Let's be an example for them. Our world is watching us. Our region is watching us. And if our, our video, Holly and I's video isn't an example of that what one person what two people can do i she she was sign you know she was delivering sign language to the hearing impaired community i caught it on video y'all it's it's 60 seconds 60 seconds have changed the world it has touched people's hearts and souls and minds if we can do it you can do it be nice be the change you want to see in the world Stop labeling people. Open your mind. We can do it together. So with that being said, I want to play this video. And again, I hope this starts to break down some labels and some walls that we have for each other. And I am going to play it at the end of every show until this bill goes to Senate. Because maybe you maybe you just don't know. I mean, that's my hope that we can educate each other. Because the only thing that difference, the only difference between myself and someone else is exposure. Maybe you just haven't been exposed to the truth. Maybe you just haven't been exposed to the facts. Maybe you're living in whatever parish and you've never been to another one that that has different cultures and things like that. Or, Or maybe here down here, I haven't been to your parish. Maybe we should start visiting other parishes. Maybe we should start eating with each other. Maybe we should start having conversations, acknowledging that we have a problem and doing something about it. We're going to start taking those steps to heal um, New Orleans, but obviously it's not just New Orleans. It's the state. It's regional. There's a lot of ugliness that has been shown in Louisiana recently, and hopefully we can begin to heal with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding. So here we go. This is the video from Colonel. I'm a colonel, a history professor nonetheless, from the U.S. Military Academy of West Point, and he is going to give you the cause of the Civil War. Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? More than 150 years later, this remains a controversial question. Why? Because many people don't want to believe that the citizens of the southern states were willing to fight and die to preserve a morally repugnant institution. There has to be another reason, we are told. Well, there isn't. The evidence is clear and overwhelming. Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War for both sides. Before the presidential election of 1860, a South Carolina newspaper warned that the issue before the country was the extinction of slavery and called on all who were not prepared to surrender the institution to act. Shortly after Abraham Lincoln's victory, they did. The secession documents of every southern state made clear, crystal clear, 
that they were leaving the Union in order to protect their peculiar institution of slavery, a phrase that at the time meant the thing special to them. The vote to secede was 169 to 0 in South Carolina, 166 to 7 in Texas, 84 to 15 in Mississippi. In no southern state was the vote close. Alexander Stevens of Georgia, the Confederacy's vice president, clearly articulated the views of the South in March 1861. Our new government, he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. Yet despite the evidence, many continue to argue that other factors superseded slavery as the cause of the Civil War. Some argue that the South only wanted to protect states' rights. But this raises an obvious question. The states' rights to what? Wasn't it to maintain and spread slavery? Moreover, states' rights was not an exclusive Southern issue. All the states, North and South, sought to protect their rights. Sometimes they petitioned the federal government. Sometimes they quarreled with each other. In fact, Mississippians complained that New York had too strong a concept of states' rights because it would not allow Delta planters to bring their slaves to Manhattan. The South was preoccupied with states' rights because it was preoccupied first and foremost with retaining slavery. Some argue that the cause of the war was economic. The North was industrial and the South agrarian. And so the two lived in such economically different societies that they could no longer stay together. Not true. In the middle of the 19th century, both North and South were agrarian societies. In fact, the North produced far more food crops than did the South. But Northern farmers had to pay their farmhands who were free to come and go as they pleased, while Southern plantation owners exploited slaves over whom they had total control. And it wasn't just plantation owners who supported slavery. The slave society was embraced by all classes in the South. The rich had multiple motivations for wanting to maintain slavery. But so did the poor, non-slaveholding whites. The peculiar institution ensured that they did not fall to the bottom rung of the social ladder. That's why another argument that the Civil War couldn't have been about slavery because so few people own slaves has little merit. Finally, many have argued that President Abraham Lincoln fought the war to keep the Union together, not to end slavery. That was true at the outset of the war. But he did so with the clear knowledge that keeping the Union together meant either spreading slavery to all the states, an unacceptable solution, or vanquishing it altogether. In a famous campaign speech in 1858, Lincoln said, A house divided against itself cannot stand. What was it that divided the country? It was slavery and only slavery. He continued, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. It will become all one thing or all the other. Lincoln's view never changed, and as the war progressed, the moral component, ending slavery, became more and more fixed in his mind. His Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 turned that into law. Slavery is the great shame of America's history. No one denies that. But it's to America's everlasting credit that it fought the most devastating war in its history in order to abolish slavery. As a soldier, I am proud that the United States Army, my army, defeated the Confederates. In its finest hour, soldiers wearing this blue uniform, almost 200,000 of them, former slaves themselves, destroyed chattel slavery, freed four million men, women, and children from human bondage, and saved the United States of America. I'm Colonel Ty Sigley, Professor and Head, Department of History at the United States Military Academy, West Point, for Prager University.